a special episode of the In Her Skin Knitting Podcast. My name is Marielle and I created this channel here uh, to document my knitting and uh, crafting journey. Uh, and last time, in my last episode, I mentioned that I wanted to cast on soon a hat for my boyfriend for Christmas. And I've since finished it. So it kind of inspired me to come on here and share a few projects that I've made for him in the last uh, year or so. Um, so yeah, I have today uh, three knitting projects and one uh, sewing project and future section plans for him. Um, yeah, I would say that generally speaking, I'm more of a selfish knitter. Uh, but I do knit for others from time to time, and he is very knit-worthy. So, yeah, I thought I would uh, come here to share a few of the things that I made for him. Um, yeah, and I like to make things for him because he also makes things for me. Um, so, yeah, I knit, I sew, and his hobbies are more uh, like woodworking, um, etc. He likes to build things, he likes to fix things, so um, for example, he made me this uh, little wood crate <laughs> recently uh, that I've been using to store some yarn. Um, he's also helped me before to build like a, a frame that uh, I've been using for punch needling. Um, I'll try to insert some pictures because I don't have it here with me. Uh, he also made me like a pegboard to store my uh, thread bobbins for sewing. Uh, what else? He also modified my yarn winder so that I can use it with a drill instead of cranking it by hand. <laughs> so yeah, he's very helpful um, in that aspect of my knitting. So I like to give back um, to him in uh, knitted items. <laughs> So yeah, and I'll just start maybe with what I'm wearing. Uh, if you're curious, this is the White Mountain Sweater by uh, Midori Hirose. It's the one that I've been, that I talked about briefly in my first episode, the sweater that I always wear that has a, count, a compound raglan. Uh, this is the one. Um, I did a lot of modifications to it. I think there should be like a pearl um, column here, but I didn't do it. I just made a knit stitch instead. Um, I don't remember all the modifications that I did, but yeah, it's like a super oversized sweater, um, a lot of positive ease, and I really love to wear it. I made it in uh, Gilead from Dore Homme Natura in the color I believe was Poivre Sel, along with a Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair in the color linen. So yeah, that's it for what I'm wearing. And I guess I'll jump in uh, now with the first thing, which is a sweater that I made for him. That looks like this. I don't know if I'll um, be able to convince him to model these for me. <laughs> if not, I'll put a picture at least to show the, the whole sweater. Um, but yeah, basically this is something that I started I think in October of last year, um, because I wanted to make him something for Christmas last year, um, but I only finished it recently. Um, I had a lot of issues with this one, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's now finished. I think I finished it recently for like the sixth time. Every time I was finishing it, I was finding out another issue, so I had to restart a few of the components a lot of times. So I'll briefly talk through it, what I did. Basically, I used the um, Sawyer pullover. I think it's a design by Julie Hoover, but it was for Brooklyn Tweed. Um, so yeah, I used this pattern, but I modified so many things. First off, it's supposed to be a textured sweater, all over textured sweater. Um, but with this yarn, I mean in this color, I made a swatch and we were just like losing the effect since it's so dark. Um, on camera it doesn't look so dark, but in real life it's much darker than this. It's like a true like charcoal gray. 
Um, so yeah, since it was not really worth it to do the texture, I just did stocking it everywhere. Um, <clears throat> and I think the in the pattern, it's supposed to be knit up in uh, separate pieces that you then seam together at the end. So, and everything is knit flat, but I did modify it a bit in the sense that I did start also from the bottom, like indicated in the pattern, but instead of knitting like a front panel and then a back panel, I just uh, started to knit in the round until the uh, underarms where I split for front and back. And I also think I modified the button band. Um, I made a double knit button band. I don't remember exactly what it was in the pattern, but I'm pretty sure I modified that too. Um, and the sleeves, I think I followed the pattern, but that was one of the issues that I had. <laughs> Um, the shoulder shaping was all wrong and I don't know if it's because I didn't do the texture stitch. I don't think it modified my gauge. I did do a gauge swatch in the stocking net stitch before starting the project and I was, I'm pretty sure, on gauge. So it should not have modified the shoulder, but I had to basically redo all the shoulder shaping um, because again you start from the bottom knit up to the shoulder and then you seam everything together and essentially the sh this part was just like too tall so when I was seaming it together it was creating kind of like a puff sleeve which is not the look that he was going for <laughs> um, so I tried to modify that I think twice and it wasn't working out um, and so finally I just like put the sweater on his body and I did like I would do for like a sewing project um, Where I kind of like put it on his body and like pinched the excess fabric and then like created like a line here um, To know how much fabric I needed to take out and so I like redesigned the whole Shoulder so that I think is the, the thing that took me the most time from this project I think I, I redid it like four times and then I think I also had to lengthen the body um, because I guess he's taller than the than what the pattern is designed for did that and then there was also I think like the fifth time that I thought that I was done with this project I, I kind of like took it like this folded it in two just like fold it like this and put it aside and I noticed while doing that, that the sleeves were not the same length. <laughs> so I had to go back and um, remove, I think it was like a good two inches on one of the sleeves that was too long. So that is the last modification that I made. And now it's good to go. It's uh, good to be worn. Um, and I'm ready to just send it off and not work on it anymore. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I don't usually put um, labels inside of knitted garments, but for this one, since it was a gift, I found this one that says uh, stay warm hand knit. That was, I thought was cute, so I put it there. And the buttons are wood buttons that I ordered online. Uh, I think they looked a bit darker in the picture online. I think the light wood with the dark yarn is not my favorite, but I can, it's gonna do this, <laughs> it's fine. And yeah, I apologize if you hear like the fire noises in the background. I decided to film here today because uh, it was very cold. <laughs> but yeah, and the yarn that I used is the uh, Brace and Little Heritage. This one, um, it's a Canadian wool, 100% wool uh, in the color dark gray. And so, um, I think that all the yarn that I'm going to show today is stuff that uh, he approved. Uh, he usually comes, not always, but sometimes when I go yarn shopping, he'll come with me. <laughs> and then sometimes he sees things that he likes and if it's something that I think that I can uh, make a project with, we'll usually buy it because then that way at least I know that he likes the yarn, he likes the color. Um, and he's also involved in the pattern 
picking decisions. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so this one is a yarn that we bought actually when we were visiting my parents, uh, I think two summers ago. Um, we used to live in Montreal, but my parents live in New Brunswick. So we went to visit them. Um, and at some point my mom mentioned like, oh yeah, I think I saw some yarn at the Great Canadian Dollar Store. So if you're Canadian, you're probably familiar with this store. Um, which is like a dollar store, but they also have items that are a bit more expensive. Um, but yeah, she said that she saw some yarn there, so we decided to go check it out. And there was a lot of yarn, um, and it was all breaks in the middle. And I think these retail normally around seven fifty, I think, Canadian dollars. But uh, these were, I think, five fifty or five dollars, five Canadian dollars per skein. And for this sweater, for example, I've used five. And so it's, you know, a pretty big size sweater under 30 Canadian dollars. For me, it's uh, quite a bargain. So we bought him two sweater quantities of this um, that he chose uh, the color. And yeah, we bought a lot of wool that day. I think I have a picture of like me carrying the big basket. <laughs> but this was one of the purchases. Um, yeah. Alright, so the next project that I have is the hat that um, I was talking about in my, very briefly in my last episode. Um, I think I just mentioned that I wanted to cast on a hat for him, but I didn't uh, go into more details. Um, so basically, I had this yarn for him. It's the Drops Soft Tweed this in the color, I think it's color number, yeah, 17, and I think on the website that I bought it from, it was called Spinach Pie, which is kind of cute. So this nice forest brown with some very light tweediness to it. <laughs> um, and the composition is interesting. It's a 50% wool, 25% alpaca and 25% viscose. Um, so I ordered it thinking that it would be softer, um, but I was kind of scared that it would not be warm enough. Um, but I think I'm very pleasantly surprised, honestly, like this is the fabric that it creates. Um, very pleasantly surprised, it's very soft. Uh, he usually finds wool a bit itchy um, and since this was going to be on his forehead, I wanted something soft and uh, this yarn delivered. I'm surprised with the quality. Um, yeah, and basically the pattern that we chose is the Anticosti hat by Marie-Christine Levac. I'll put a picture here. Um, I think she like revamped the pattern recently. Uh, it didn't have to use, it didn't used to have a folded um, band, but she added that and before it was like an eyelet version, so it's like ribbing, but in her first version there was some eyelets. I think she also kept it with the eyelets in her uh, new version, but there was also this version that she shared on her podcast and I thought that he would like it. Um, so when I asked him uh, what kind of hat he would like. He was kind of like googling and looking at pictures and what he came up with was something that was ribbed and then he said that he wanted um, something that was like folded over but not too obvious. <laughs> so I was like okay um, and it made me think of this pattern because the way that she does it is like folded on the inside like this and you don't have to sew it after you knit, you basically knit like double this length um, and then when you're ready to join them together, you just pick up from the cast on edge and knit that stitch together with the stitch that's already on your needle. So it does like a very nice um, finishing like this. And yeah, so he, I showed him this pattern, he agreed and so I cast it on and I knit it pretty fast. It's a uh, four by two ribbing. So um, it knit up 
pretty fast. I don't know if I can try it on. I have like a clip at the back of my head. Oh my God, it's working. <laughs> um, we have very similar size heads. This is what it looks like on. Um, yeah, when I was making it, it was kind of funny because I didn't swatch for it. Um, usually, uh, Marie-Christine Levax, her designs, like I know that usually I get the same gauge as her. Um, but this one is <laughs> kind of funny because I just started it. Um, and then my boyfriend was looking at me like, are you making my hat already? <laughs> I said, yes. And then he's like, but how do you know it's gonna fit? You didn't measure my head. <laughs> like, okay, good point. And then he thought that on my needles, it was looking huge. So I was like, okay, maybe I should take some measurements and see what's going on. And I measured his head and it was corresponding to the largest size in the pattern, the one that I had cast on. So I was like, no, like it's fine. Then he was like, are you sure? Like it looks very big. <laughs> So then I measured my gauge on the, the piece of fabric that I had already uh, created um, and my gauge was too big. So basically I had to frog it and uh, I ended up casting on the smallest size to get the measurements of the largest size. So I guess it's a good thing that he was sitting beside me and uh, <laughs> looking at what I was doing while I was casting this on. So yeah, I think that's it for this one. I enjoyed it so much that I think at some point I'll make one for myself. Um, I really like also the, the version that has the eyelet, so I'll probably make that one for me eventually. So yeah, I basically wanted to um, choose a very small and gratifying project as a Christmas gift this year because last year I failed to get the sweater done on time for Christmas. So. That's why I chose this project and I'm very happy and uh, satisfied that I got it done on time this year. <laughs> and then the third project that I have uh, knitting wise is a pair of socks. These socks. Um, this yarn I think we bought at Knit City Montreal uh, like two years ago now I believe. Um, he came with me and I think it was like the first time that I brought him along, um, brought him along with me to like a yarn, yarny event. <laughs> um, and so at first he was kind of over overwhelmed, but then he got like into the mood um, of shopping for yarn. <laughs> so he was like pointing at things that he liked. And so I was like, oh, this is sock yarn. You can choose like one color and I can make you some socks. So he cho chose this yarn. It's the Arfil Bell, I believe. It's a sock yarn. Um, the color I don't remember, but if I can find it, I'll put it down in the description. Um, yeah, so basically I, we bought one skein of this. Um, and as you can see, I also put some contrasting colors at the cuff, heel and toes because the 100 gram was not sufficient. <laughs> Um, I think it was, yeah, this is the first pair of socks that I've made for him. And basically the issue was that, like I measured his foot, like uh, at this part to know if a 72 stitch sock would be fine, because I think that usually that's the um, biggest size in knitting patterns for socks. And that's what I've been hearing people that people that's what they make for their husbands boyfriends brothers whatever people that have bigger feet um i always heard that they make the 72 stitches socks so i measured and it was fine the issue was that when he was basically i made a whole sock and then before i closed for the toe i asked him to try it on um and the issue was that his like this part of his foot don't know if this is the instep probably like this is the instep but anyways this part was too big to pass through <laughs> this um to the through this part so i had to frog it and come up with another solution so what i did is i think around here around the leg i have 
80 stitches um, and I did I think a three yeah three by one rib all around so that on his leg it would be a bit more snug and he could pass this part of the foot through the sock um, and then I think that when I did the gusset I decreased until I had a 72 stitch count here around and did some ribbing but just for the the top of the foot so this works out now um, he can put them on no problem but yeah I don't know if you're watching this and you've had this issue before um, please let me know if you have another suggestion um, than casting on more stitches here and then decreasing at the gusset I'm curious to know if uh, if there's another solution for this <laughs> But yeah, this is just a vanilla sock that I didn't use any pattern for. And I don't remember what the yarn is for the uh, cuff, heel and toes. Something that I had in stash. So yeah, um, that's it for the knitted projects. The only uh, sewing project that I have, I'll show it just quickly. It's a uh, shirt that I made for him for his birthday which was in August this year. Um, it's made using like a denim-like cotton. I don't think it, it's like technically a chambre, um, but yeah, very light cotton. Um, and I basically made this one just like as a toile, um, just to test out the pattern. This is the Fairfield button-up shirt by Thread Theory. Um, I had never made a shirt before, so I wanted to um, test it out. And I'm impressed with the pattern. Um, I'm not super impressed with my technical details though. I think that there's some places uh, where my stitching here maybe is not super even. Um, but yeah, it was a, a good test, I guess. Um, I think I'll make this pattern again. Um, I would like to make him another one in like a, maybe a wool blend uh, fabric would be really nice for the winter. Um, and yeah, I might even make one for myself as like an over shirt, like for the summer, like a beach cover up or something like that. Um, yeah, but I wanted to show it mainly because of the little tag that I made. <laughs> I'm going to take it out of the hanger, it's going to be easier to show. But yeah, I usually for knitting projects, I'm not a fan of putting a label in. Um, I don't know why, I think maybe just because it's like finicky to put on and then sometimes it can be like a bit scratchy. But for sewing projects, I really like to um, put one on. And for this shirt, I didn't really have anything that um, felt right, I guess. I didn't know what to, to use, so I decided to make one. And this is what it looks like. So I hand embroidered his name, Joshua, <laughs> and the size that I made. So this is the size large that I chose from the pattern so that next time I know, you know, this one fits well so I can make this one again for him. So yeah, I was very happy with myself for making this little label. <laughs> and yeah, that's it for um, that project. And as for upcoming projects for him, um, aside from the other shirts that I would like to sew for him, um, I have this other skein of um, sock yarn. It's from Wool Unit and it's hand dyed. It's like a, this type of yarn is, um, I forget the, the name, but it looks kind of like a hand spun, but it's not. It's just like um, spun with a darker colored yarn and then they dye it after like this. Um, this is not really my colors, but again, he chose this. So we'll make him socks eventually with this yarn. And uh, the other thing is it's the same yarn that I'm using to make my uh, Mika slipover. I mentioned in my last episode that I stole three skeins from his sweater quantity <laughs> to make a slipover because I know that I have more than enough of this one to make him a sweater and something else for me. 
Um, so yeah, this was bought at the same time as the other uh, brazen little yarn that I used for his sweater. And I think I will make probably the Northland sweater by Petite Knit, um, just because uh, I think I think I'll need the gauge with this yarn uh, for that design, and um, I want something that is a bit more easy, I guess, this time, because the last sweater that I made, it was a bottom-up con construction that needed some seaming, and I had issues with all of that, so I think that a uh, top-down construction is maybe a bit more safe. And I know that petite knit patterns are um, generally very well written, so going safe for this one, the next one. I don't know when I'll cast this on, but eventually. <laughs> and I think that's it. Um, I guess I'll try to find some footage of um, us like working around the house here. Like he does a lot of woodworking, like I was saying. Um, so if he uh, allows me <laughs> to put that, I'll um, insert it here. Um, but yeah, if not, I guess I'll see you next time for my regular content um, with all the other whips uh, that I'm working on at the moment. And yeah, I hope that you are staying warm uh, if you are in a cold climate <laughs> like me um, and that you're knitting on things that you are loving. Until next time, bye. <laughs>